Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Prayer. A little bit starting a little bit late tonight. I got sidetracked and got lost track of time. Um, but I was flipping through comments looking for prayer requests, and somebody made an interesting comment. Larry Ricky had commented about 2 Thessalonians 2. And he was like, Isn't doesn't this prove it? And I know exactly where he got it. He's been watching other people's videos. They tell you it's 2 Thessalonians 2. It's talking about one day. And this in, seems to indicate that the Antichrist has to be revealed before we leave. When you read context in the Bible about that stuff, that's not what it indicates. But in this particular uh, uh, instance, it's talking about two different days. There's the day of Christ and the day of the Lord. And I did a, uh, I think I did two videos on this. <coughs> I did one earlier this year. Um, but I want to cover it quickly here. Because there's little things to notice within this. So as we read 2 Thessalonians 2, it starts out, and we're going to go down to, I'm going to go down to verse 4, but when you go further past, it, it gives you more clues. So it says here, and I'm reading out of the New King James, Now brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you, so what would be our gathering together to him? Is he talking specifically about the rapture or everybody? Because earlier, oh, I didn't show, I didn't post that video. Oh, uh, I did a video earlier and I, uh, I realized, you know what? I'm not going to get into the whole just slamming other people thing anymore. And I didn't post it. Um, you read in the book of Revelations, you see um, different gatherings happening. And... So the gathering together, to me, when I read that, it's like he's referring specifically to the rapture of the church. Because when you go in the book of Revelations, you can see like five different gatherings of people to the Lord. So he's, he's referring to something very specific here. He says, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. What, what was the context behind the letter in, of 2 Thessalonians? When you go look at it historically, because they have historical documentation about that, the people in Thessalonica, some, some other guys, several individuals, convinced them that the rapture had already happened and the Lord had come and gone. They were left behind. So when we look at it from a historical standpoint, we see really clearly what he's referring to here. He's referring to the rapture of the church. He's talking about the day of Christ. Now, I don't have time to do it in the evening prayer video, but if you go and do research for day of Christ elsewhere in the Bible, you see, you see that that was referring to a very specific time frame. Now let's go down to the next verse. Let no one deceive you by any means, verse 3, for that day, notice it's capitalized. I'm going to show you something on that. That day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Is he talking about the rapture still? Or did he change his thought? Now, in verse 2, he's talking about the rapture. It's pretty easy to establish that. Is he talking about the rapture in verse 3? When I read it, and I do a little research on that in the two videos I did on that, it's talking about a completely different day. Now, verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? So, at this point in verse 5, you could say, well, I don't know. Maybe he's just talking about the rapture and the, and the Antichrist has to be revealed first. A lot of people get in that frame of mind in the first five verses. But here's the key. And like I say constantly, you can't take one verse out of context. You've got to read five verses above it and five verses below it. When you read further, the very next verse tells you what's happening. Verse six, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. That he isn't capitalized, so it's not talking about Jesus. It's talking about the Antichrist. And he says, and now you know what is restraining. What do you mean restraining? It's restraining him. He cannot be revealed to the world until we are gone. We'll know him at a glance. 
and will yell it out to the world, guys, that's the Antichrist. That can't happen. So we have to be removed so we don't jump up and sound the alarm and say, hey, y'all, <coughs> look right here in the Bible. This is our guy. We can't, he can't have that. We have to be gone. Verse 6 proves that. Tells you what the first five verses are referring to. We are restraining. Verse 7, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. See, a lot of people that teach you that the first five verses in this, in 2 Thessalonians 2, is talking about the same thing, and that the Antichrist has to be revealed first, they never read verses 6 and 7 and 8. Verse 8 says, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of, a, of his coming. The rapture of the church is a pre-tribulation event. The rapture of the church must happen before the Antichrist is revealed. The Antichrist, let me flip that. This is how it really should be said. The Antichrist cannot be re revealed until the church is removed. Listen, Nothing prophetic that is active right now can conclude until we are gone. Everything that involves the tribulation, though we see the precursors to it now, there will be no war, there will be no nothing, anything involving the tribulation itself, we will not see that stuff and it will not happen until we are gone. Because that time and those problems are solely for Israel and for the unbeliever. And, and for the rebellious people. Solely for them. It's not for us. So people that do this with these first five verses miss the next three, which give you the context of what he's referring to and give it the timestamp. He's telling you, now you know what's restraining. Now you know what's holding him back and keeping him from being revealed. It's us. We've got to be removed first. Because the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Notice that H is capitalized in verse 7. Who's that referring to? Holy Spirit. And you can go prove that in the rest of the Bible. Holy Spirit's referred to as a capital H. It's the Spirit of God. Who's got the Holy Spirit? Us. So we have to be removed before anything can happen. All of these people that are teaching people that it's a mid-trib or a post-trib event have no clue what they're doing because they refuse to read the word in context. And when I've showed people those other three verses, I tell them, okay, so what context is this in? Or are these three verses to be ignored so you can be right? When you read 6, 7, and 8, it tells you what 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are talking about. That's context. So if somebody is out there telling you that, it, well, the, the Antichrist has to be revealed first. No, they're wrong. And they can't prove it out of 2 Thessalonians 2 because verses 6, 7, and 8 prove differently. Paul literally is telling them exactly what's going to happen. We've got to be removed before he can do anything. And verse 8 proves it. And then the lawless one will be revealed. And then what? He who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way, the previous verse. Perfect context. Now, you can go even further. And uh, see, there's a lot of debates about the differences between them. You can Google that and look that up. But if you go into Strong's and look at Strong's, we're in 2 Thessalonians 2. <clears throat> um, verse 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ had is at hand. Notice G2250, Hamera, the day used in a natural day uh, or the interval between sunrise and sunset as distinguished from and contrasted with the night. Metaphorically, the day is regarded as a time of abstaining from indulgence, vice, crime, because of acts. So you see what it's referring to? has a very specific definition. Now watch this. Verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except. So in the Greek, that whole phrase is one word. A-N-M-E. A or e n -may. G3362. It's a different Greek word. So why is there a difference if it's the same thing. 
wouldn't they have used the same thing? What they didn't, did they? They could have just used the same Greek word, but they didn't. It's a totally different reference. The definition of that is, if not, unless, whoever not. And the whole that whole phrase is used by that Greek word. So when you see the differences in the Greek, that tells you the interpretation is different between these two references. It's the same thing as when you go into a Revelation 12.5. And you look and the first instance of the word child in the fifth verse is a, is a completely different word it's, it, than the second use of the word child. Two completely different Greek words because they're referring to two completely different things. You know, the first one is... Right here, let me just show you. Since, we, since we've got the good stuff open here, Revelation 12 verse 5. So there's verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So the first instance of child is G5207, huios, a son. It's a very specific word. Very, very specific. Son of man. Very specific used to Christ himself. This word is an extremely specific reference. Now, rod of iron and her child, look at, see, it's a different Greek word. G5043. Technon. Offspring, children, child, male child, son, metaphorical uh, testament, children of God. It's not referring to Jesus anymore. It's referring to people. It's referring to a group of people. It's referring to multiple people. So when you see two different Greek words being used for the same word in the same sentence, it tells you it's referring to two different things, doesn't it? Then, of course, you go to the name. The child was caught up, and that's harpazoed, rapture. That second child was caught up, taken to heaven. So here we see a classic example of what we see in 2 Thessalonians 2. Two different words used for the same word. And here it's child. Now, could they have said, and he she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her children were caught up unto God and to his throne? No, that doesn't make sense. Grammatically, you have to use child. But in the Greek, totally different. See, if you spoke Koine Greek, you'd hear the two different words and know that the, the word is child. But that is referring to two different children. One, one is Christ, one is us. So when you go back to 2 Thessalonians, and look at 2 Thessalonians, are these the same day being referred to? Or are they two different days? One day has its own Greek word as reference to the day of Christ. The other day that's capitalized in verse 3, that whole phrase has a Greek term for that entire phrase. Totally different reference. It's referring to something completely different and specific. We have the day of Christ, which is the rapture, and the day of the Lord, which is the com the second coming. And if you hear anybody say this stuff, tell me, what about verses 6, 7, and 8? Verses 6, 7, and 8, literally Paul is saying, now you know what's holding him back to keep him from coming out. He hasn't been revealed yet because we're still here. Until we're gone... He still has to, he's still going to stay hidden. It doesn't matter who's been talking to him. He will never be able to show his face for who he really is until we are removed because we we know who he is and we'll we'll spot him instantly. And that will ruin his plans because the whole world will go, "Wait, what? Yeah, come here. Look. It's right here in the Bible." And it'll it'll mess his plans up. Can't happen that way. We must be removed first. So if anybody tells you that and tries to convince you that the Antichrist has to be revealed first, wrong. And the Antichrist has not been revealed. If he has, tell me who he is. Because I hear people say that. Oh, he's already here. You're right. He is here. He's alive and well. Who is he? Well, I don't know. Well, then he hasn't been revealed. If you don't know who he is, he hasn't been revealed. How many government officials can you Google and name from every country in the world? All of them. That information is easy. Why can't we find the Antichrist? Because he hasn't been revealed yet. 
We're waiting for these things to happen. And he's chomping at the bit. But he can't. It's impossible. He cannot do it. This is all under God's control. So if somebody says that stuff to you about this, tell, tell them that verses 6, 7, and 8 and take them to the Greek. Tell them, look, it's different. There's two different things here. And it's subtle. You don't catch it if you're not looking for it. It's subtle. But once you see it, you realize almost everything in the Bible does that. And when you start to notice the changes, you're like, whoa, that changes what that verse means. It changes what that verse means. Now I'm starting to understand. God knew what he was doing because only the people who wanted to know the truth would find it. The people that don't care and don't want to know the truth aren't going to find it because they refuse to read the word and do their own research. They refuse. I'm convicting people right now. That if you get offended, that, that's the intent. People refuse to read the Bible. They refuse... You can get a Bible for free today. You can go and get a, a, a secondhand bookstore and get a Strong's Concordance for five bucks or less. Sometimes you'll find them for free. Find, find a friend that's got one on the shelf and they'll give it to you if they're not using it. And you can look it up. I downloaded that Bible app. It's, it's called My Sword. Right here at the top, My Sword Bible. It's free. I downloaded it for free. Didn't have to do anything. It's got Strong's in it. It's got regular Bible in it. You can compare verses. You can do everything with it. So it's not like it's hard to find this stuff. eSword for your computer. So it's bigger text. Free. Free to download. The only thing you pay for is the different versions of the Bible you want. That's it. I think total I spent $14.50 for the different Bible versions that, that I wanted. So I could go into the Greek, use New King James, and use the ESV. In fact, I think the new, no, the ESV was free and the King James was free, but I had to pay for the new King James and I had to pay for the Strong's, the King James Version Plus. That was $14.50. That's it. The, the app was free, still free. So it's not like it's hard to find this information. It's whether or not, and it, it, God knew what he was doing because he knew people were going to be this way. It's a system where if you have the desire to find it, go look for it and he'll show it to you. Problem is, people don't have the desire to find it. They want somebody else to tell them what the Bible says. Look, this is the truth. And there's many of you that know this about yourselves, but you're, you're unwilling to admit it. You want somebody else to do the work for you and tell you what the Bible means. Well, how come when I prove it and show it in the Bible, you run to another channel and you go listen to what they say and then come back and ask me about it? If you want somebody to show you the Bible, I just showed you. And what verses did they give you to prove their point? One, two, three, four. We just covered three different Bible versions. And the, and the Greek. And did it contextually. So I fail to understand why this is, a, this is, this is always an issue. And it's, it, I, I do understand, but I don't understand why it continues to be an issue. Because it's so easy just to read the Bible. It's so easy to go and look for yourself. When somebody tells you something, you go, hmm, and you go and look for yourself. Um, um, uh, Morris Blackburn is a big fan of Brenda Weltner, I found out today. And he was singing her praises in a video I was watching earlier, and I was like, oh, Lord, I can't believe this. And I, so I, I, get, I, warned, I talked to him today, I warned him. I was like, dude, be careful, man, be careful. Because a bunch of what this woman teaches is completely wrong. She's all about the three and a half year tribulation when the Bible clearly says it's seven, on and on and on. And it's like, no, that's not what that's, it's completely wrong. And she deceives so many people, but people keep going back and watching her videos. But she's so godly and she's so, she's so in the word. Really? Okay. Well, when I was following her at the beginning of 2019 and watching her videos, I saw, started to see right away there were some issues, and I was following along in the Bible going, well, hold on a second, Brenda. You covered this verse and said that proves what you were saying, but when I read the verses around that verse, that proves you wrong. What's going on here? And then the Lord was like, now you see what I'm trying to show you. And I started doing that with everything in the Bible, and I realized just how many people out there who are teaching false doctrine. I realized how many people out there are teaching lies and deceit and confusing people. And they don't care because when you bring it up and go, well, wait a minute now, look at what this says. You're now less than human 
because you don't have the schooling they have. You're not skinny and in shape. You're not attractive like they are. You don't have nice hair like they are. You don't have the same computer they are. You don't speak like they do. You're, you don't, you know, articulate like they do. Um, you don't have the background they have. They know more than everyone because they were chosen specifically by God to do this. BS. T complete, huge dump truck load of BS. God doesn't choose the perfect people to do his will. He chooses the broken, messed up, retarded people. He chooses the scum of the earth. He chooses the people nobody likes to, to, to do his will. Because the people who really want it will listen to them. Everyone else will judge them, see them as lower than them, and walk away. When you get to heaven, ask John the Baptist. He'll tell you all about it. Ask Jeremiah the prophet. He'll tell you all about it. Ask Elijah. He'll tell you all about it. And many more. Ask Jesus. He'll tell you all about it. Jesus was the Messiah. And they spit on him. Beat him. Punched him and slapped him. And called him names. God knows what he's doing. But you know what? If that person sounds good to you and they give you the tingle... Go watch their stuff. Believe what they say. If you don't want to go and do your own work and do your own research and learn the truth for yourself from God himself, go watch those videos. Go learn what they're teaching. I hope you're pleasantly surprised and not horribly mistaken. Because there's a lot of people that are going to be very horribly mistaken. I've been shown this and I don't like it. I'm desperately trying to reach people, and I can't, because people, they want the tingle, and I can't give them the tingle. Oh, the people who want want to know the truth get it, because it's Holy Spirit driven, but I can only do so much. I can only present to you what's in the Bible. I can't make you believe. I can't create, you know, put it in a way and wrap it in a package that's going to make it appealing. It, it comes in a plain brown wrapper, and that's all the wrapping paper I got. So it is what it is. If, if you aren't willing to make the choice, the conscious choice to say, you know what? I think this person's right. We should be tithing. So I'm going to give 10% of my check. And by the way, Lord, while I'm doing that, I'm going to give you 10% of my time. I'm going to give you 2.4 hours a day because I want to do this the right way. And yet nobody ever does that. Most people can't even give him 10 minutes. And that's horrible. That's horrible. That's the sign of the times. That's how things are. As terrible as it is, that's the way it is. And people like me that are just, we're nobody, we're, we're nothing. Everyone looks down on us, calls us names. People tell us how they love us one day and make fun of us the next day and, and beat us down. We're the ones God's putting out there to try to reach people. But it was only, only the people who see the truth and want the truth are responding to those people. Everyone else is mocking them and walking away. And what does the Bible say about that? That's the part that terrifies me. The Bible very clearly describes what happens to people who don't receive the truth, who don't want the truth. And it's scary. It scares me. It scares me because of how many people I see doing exactly what that Bible says they're going to do. And yet they call themselves Christians. That's what makes me so focused on making sure I give exactly what this word is saying and not my opinion. And if it's my opinion, I tell you it's my opinion. But I try as hard as I can to prove it. As much as I can. Because I don't want to deceive anybody. I don't want people to believe me. I want you to go and find your, have your own uh, mission of discovery. Because it's exciting when you discover it yourself. But if you never go try. And you just want somebody else to do it. How are you ever going to find it? So... You know, you, you're, I'm very, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I'm very open in this, on this channel. I tell you guys exactly how I feel about things because I don't want to hold anything back. I'm not trying to win a fashion show or popularity contest. 
I'm trying to give the truth out there because of the desperate lack of time we have left to get it right and to establish truth. And the more I see and the more discussions that I have with different people, and the more terrible videos I see of people walking in such weird weird ideas about things when the Bible completely and clearly contradicts those things. And I heard more say in that video, I, I dare anybody to show me a, a scripture, show me a verse that says the tribulation seven years. And if you do, I'm, I'm throwing it out. Wait a second. You just said you wanted somebody to show you a verse. And if they do, you're going to throw it away. Well, hold on a second. <clears throat> so you're telling me even if there's proof, you don't care? You don't want to see it? That's terrible. That's a terrible way of thinking. If I'm wrong, I want to see proof. And if I see proof, I'm accepting that proof. Funny enough, you can go to Revelation, Zechariah, Zephaniah. There's a little bit in Habakkuk, Isaiah, Daniel. And you can prove that it's a seven-year tribulation very clearly. But... I was going to offer that to him until he made that remark. You show me, I'm going to throw it out. Okay, well, this conversation's over before it started. I love the guy, but he's letting her tell him what the Bible means. And that's not fair to him. And that's not right of her. Because we should be doing it ourselves. God did not intend for someone to teach us. Paul even tells Timothy, no one is going to teach you, the Holy Spirit will teach you. It's the same for us. Now, th this is my worry for Christians. This is my worry now. In, in the time that we're in and what we see going on. is people who are so easily swayed to follow someone who's incorrect. And then justify it. When the Bible tells you not to do that. So, read the scriptures for yourselves, guys. All I can do is say it. I can't make anybody do anything. Until you do it for yourself, you're never going to know how good it is, how good it feels to suddenly realize, oh man, I've been I've messed that up this whole time. Look at this. Now I really know what this means. This is awesome. Very unfortunate that this that this happens this way, but it. It's supposed to happen. So anyway, let's get into some prayer on that somber note. Uh, but we do have good, a uh, good uh, understanding verse tonight, and we've got a prayer request to lift up. But I'm going to add my own prayer request to this video, um, like I always do, because it's important that we pray on things like this. Lord, we come before you this evening to give you praise, honor, and glory. To thank you for your mercy and grace and your great love. To honor you, to to bless you, to lift your name up as our Lord and Savior. You are our Lord and Savior. You died for us. You paid for my sins. You paid for my brethren's sins. Each one of us individually, you paid the debt that we owed so that we could be have the right to be called sons of God, so that we could enter heaven and stand before God. But with the terrible deception that's going on today, how can we reach people with the truth? Because so many refuse to read your word. Lord, I pray you have mercy on the brothers and sisters who who don't want to read your word. They want somebody to tell them what the Bible means. I, I pray you have mercy on those and, and open their eyes and their hearts and give them understanding on your word that the Holy Spirit will show them what it means. That's what you've been doing to me. I didn't get any of this stuff from anyone else. I don't use other people's commentary and opinion to, to formulate my own. I, I read it and you talk to me and the Holy Spirit tells me what this means. It's very clear English. What's wrong today, Lord? How can, how can we... I know it's not about succeeding, but how can we reach people if there's no desire to know the truth? And I struggle with that. You know I struggle with that because we talk about this off camera a lot. We know that the rapture of the church comes before the tribulation. It comes before any of these bad things happen. And it has to. Reasonable deduction tells you by reading these scriptures, just like 2 Thessalonians 2, tells us that we have to be removed before all that happens because that 
time is not for us. We are under grace. There is no wrath for us. And it's like people are just, they desperately want to suffer and die. It's like they don't want you to come. It, it's like they, they, they're they afraid of you coming. So they're making excuses and coming up with weird understandings that it's a, at a different time frame. Well, Lord, um, for me personally, I'm ready to go. I believe exactly what the Bible says. And, and I'm ready. I don't care who the Antichrist is. I've got my own opinion on that. I don't care who he is. I don't care about all this stuff. I just want to get the truth out there as much as I can before we go. But when you come, I'm ready to leave. Why do so many Christians want to stay here? Why do they want to be martyred? Why do they want to die? You've already appointed people who are going to be martyred. None of us know who's going to be martyred. You've already appointed that. It's already been taken care of. The people that are going to be martyred have already had, they already got that in the path of their life. Your word says that, that they've been appointed to martyrdom. It's in chapter, chapter six of Revelation, fifth seal. So why so much confusion? Is it all Satan or is it just us? Are we just that inept that we refuse to listen to truth? I don't know. It still boggles my mind and it's very disheartening and discouraging. But Lord, you are the Lord. You are omnipotent. You strengthen. You build up. You teach. You encourage. You bring understanding. And we're going to rely on you for understanding. And as discouraging and frustrating as this is, I'm not stopping. I'm going to keep putting the truth out there. I'm going to keep touching on these subjects. I'm going to keep explaining these things. Because there's more details that are coming out about e e these things all the time. And it makes it easier and easier to prove them true. Because I don't like that people are teaching false understandings knowingly. They'll, they say they're teaching the truth. But when it directly contradicts your word, they're doing it knowingly. And they know they're doing it. They won't change because they don't want to look bad in front of people. I don't care if I look bad. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Whatever. But I don't think I'm wrong because I'm just reading your word for what it says. And if I am wrong, Lord, stop me. We've had this talk, you know, stop me. Change me. Redirect me. I'm at the point where I don't know what else to say or do, so I'm going to stick with what the Word says and just keep preaching it. Keep driving that nail home, and eventually it's going to stay in the hole. Eventually that board is going to stay up. I just pray that not too many people get led too far down the wrong path because they refuse to read your Word, and they refuse to look into it and develop that desire to know more and to learn more about your Word, about you. I, that's what I want. My desire is to know more. I thank you for everything that you do, Lord, and for the amazing blessings you pour out on us. And for the strength every day to do what we're doing. Because many of us are in the trenches. But every now and then I feel like asking, when is this fight going to be over? It's just so frustrating. I can relate to Jeremiah so much. I'll never match what he went through, but I can really relate to it. He had to have been frustrated so badly because no one would listen. Now, I've got good people on my channel. They, they listen. They know. They want you. They want your word. They want your truth. But there's so many more that don't. Those are the ones we're trying to reach. And it's unfortunate that it's going the way it is. We pray for mercy for them. We pray for understanding for them, that they come to the truth. Because that's the goal. That's the desire, that they come to the truth. Is that they stand with us and not opposed. Because we want to all go across that line together. We all want to enter into the narrow gate together. So Lord, please show us the way and help us to do that. I have people to lift up tonight. I have my own prayer request. And we have one from Sister Jennifer. And it goes off of the one she gave up last, she uh, presented last night. Things are hard. I agree. Things are very hard. <laughs> um, and she's asking for help in breathing. And there's anxiety that's coming from the breathing. And anxiety from what's going on. She's 
going through what we're going through. There, there's anxiety for for your people and what they're going through, for the problems we see happening today, money problems, uh, all kinds of stuff that, that create anxiety. Lord, give us peace over these things. These things that we can't really completely control how they unfold. All we can do is what we know to do. There's a scripture where you say, you ask the apostles, because they were worried about some things, and you ask them, by thinking about it, can you make yourself a foot and a half taller, or can you add one hour to your life? And you said, if you can't do something so simple, why do you worry about anything else? Today, worry about today. Tomorrow has its own troubles and they'll take care of themselves. And that has always stuck with me. And I only now, at this part, point in my life, have learned not to worry about tomorrow, not to worry about those other things. I, I'm still troubled by things, but I don't worry about them because I know it's always going to work out, always, because it always has. When I put my faith in you and my trust in you and I lean on you, it always works out. And it always will. Lord, so, Lord, I lift up Sister Jennifer for those things and all my brethren who are struggling with those things. And I also add a prayer request for the brothers and sisters out there who are caught up with these false teachers that give them the tingle, that make them feel good, make them feel excited. But they're teaching a false doctrine. They're teaching something that doesn't coincide with your word. It goes against it. Lord, I pray for them. Have mercy on them. Please turn the light on for them. Turn them around and head them back in the right direction. That they come back to your word, back to the truth. That they don't listen to anyone, even especially me. And they go read it for themselves. Because if they do, the Holy Spirit will show them what it means, just like it showed me and thousands and thousands and thousands of others who did the same thing. I'm not going to listen to other people because everybody's on a different page. I'm going to go read it for myself and see what it says. And boom, there it is. If we have that true desire in our heart, you show us exactly what these things mean. And you have exposed me to things and shown revelations that I never noticed before. And many other people have never seen before too. You've introduced concepts in your word that are just astounding. And even... The greats of our time and the past never saw these things. You've got to go back a few hundred years to find people who saw these same things. And I think it's amazing and I love it. And I'm so glad that we have an opportunity to be able to do this. The time is so short right now, but it's, it's awesome because I've never seen your word this way before. I've never heard anybody talk about it this way either. That's what makes it even more special. And I love your word, and I love what I'm getting out of it, and I love the changes that are happening within me because of it. And I love that you're answering our prayers on these things. So, Lord, those are our prayer requests for tonight. The great understanding that we get from your word and from the Holy Spirit and from our life experiences are, are talked about in the Bible everywhere. 1 Corinthians 2.12, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. There should be no confusion over salvation. And there for a long time I was confused until you showed me the truth. Of course, I had to leave an entire group of people in order to, to stay in that truth because even they were getting off the mark. Salvation is one way and one way only, your way. And it's talked about very specifically in the Bible and in great detail. The spirit that we receive is a very specific spirit. The scripture we shared before we started praying about he being capitalized. Well, here spirit is capitalized in reference to the Holy Spirit. Little details that prove so much. And I love it. I'm fully convinced. I just wish I could convince more people. But that's, a, that's in your hands, Lord. It's not for me to convince them. It's for me to present. You'll, you're the one that convinces them. You're the one that sends them. You're the one that gets into their heart and changes them. I pray for the brethren. It's so hard nowadays because there's so many people 
that have an angle. There's so many people that have a, an agenda. There's so many people that are getting caught up with deceiving spirits. And they're, and your Bible talks about that. And they, they openly admit. And they don't even realize it. And I hear it in their videos. They openly admit what they're doing. And they don't even realize they've said it. And I don't know if I'm the only one that's hearing this or not. But I hear it. They're, they're saying it verbally. And it's so weird to hear. And it's like, is anybody else seeing this? And I look in the comment section. All I see is, amen, praise God. Amazing word. You're doing such a good job. Don't stop. What? I can't even begin to tell or count how many times I've heard the phrases you said those people would say verbatim come out of their mouths in the Bible. And it's like, do you not know you just said exactly what the Bible said? The bad people would say. And this is a person who's teaching doctrine and is supposed to be a Christian. I worry about the brethren, Lord. I worry a lot about the brethren. I just, I, I want them to have the peace I have. I want them to see this word like I see it, openly, exposed, and clear as day. But maybe it's not supposed to be that way. Maybe only certain people are supposed to see it. I don't know. I love them anyway, Lord. I love them to death. I, I love them dearly. And I really, really, really want to see the look on their face when they discover something so cool in the Bible. And it's like, this proves exactly what this is. We don't have to hear other people's versions of this. This proves it. And I'm, not, I'm that way with 2 Thessalonians 2. It proves it's a pre-tribulation rapture. It proves the Antichrist cannot come and be revealed to the world until after we're gone. Clearly. I'm convinced. I just wish I could convince others. But Nevertheless, Lord, we love you. We bless you. We thank you for the many blessings you pour on us. I give thanks for the wonderful, wonderful temperatures you've given us. And the weather has been phenomenal. That moon and Mars last night, be beautiful. It's out there again. My life is awesome. I can't complain. I got problems. I got worries. I got this like everyone else. But Lord, when I keep you in my forefront of my vision, I, I, everything is fine. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I, and I want to keep going. I want more of you, God. Just like the, the hymn says. Jesus, we love you, we thank you, and we are watching and waiting for you. Spirit and the bride say, come. Whenever you're ready, we're ready. And in your name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for joining me for evening prayer. I really do worry about the brothers and sisters because there's so much deception in the world today. There's so many problems. There's so many people taking so much of the Bible out of context to prove their point. And never realizing that so much more of it proves them wrong. But when you try to show them, they won't listen. And it's like, look, there's scripture in here that talks about what you're doing. And the outcome and the, re and the payback for it is very negative. Stop doing that. I'm, I'm worried about you and I don't want you to lose. But they won't listen. So we do what we can, guys. So, so just know, as frustrated as you are, I'm doubly frustrated because I'm, I mean, there's times like today I had to back away and not look at comments and, and respond or watch videos just to get a break from it because it's so taxing on the system to, to see that and go, but wait, th these scriptures say something totally different. What's, and they won't listen. And, or even worse, you get attacked just for sharing scripture with somebody. It's like, come on. We do the best we can. We pray for the rest. And we lean on the Lord for everything. That's all we can do. Faith, hope, and love. I love you guys very much. I pray you guys have a fantastic quiet evening. I pray your prayers are answered and the Lord pours blessings out on you overflowing and without measure. And I will see you guys in the next video.